<laughs> I haven't. Uh. So, when I first started working here at the center in the mid seventies, uh, you know, women would ask uh, not just Bob, Bob, Baba women, but women from you know just coming to the center, when they would hear about Baba's what Baba did with the women, it you know they they just kind of felt that needed some explanation. I mean, what was he doing? He's got these women up there on the hill, secluded, be, you know, behind a, a, a stone wall. They didn't have much interaction with the world and, and all that. Is this like just a reenactment of the Muslim purda, where you keep women uh, out of sight? And it was like, I would be asked, you know, what was Baba doing? And I did not feel comfortable about saying, well, that's just Baba's way and we can't question it. I had to have an answer to this because it's an understandable question. What was Baba doing with these women, keeping them so uh, secluded from the world and from men and all of that? And so I would, I put it before Baba, not just once, but I would put it, kind of hold it there. Get, you know, I need an answer to this, you know, so... I, uh, what I, <clears throat> so years went by, some, you know, a few years went by, and I went to India, I would go every year, and on this particular trip, we went up to Sikori. Now, Sikori was where uh, Gadavri Mai uh, lived there with, with her, you might say nuns, they were called kanyas, but like nuns. And she had, she was the successor to Pasni Maharaj, very wonderful woman. <clears throat> but while I was there, <clears throat> I, they, they, I got a book on Pasni Maharaj's discourses. <clears throat> and one of the discourses was on the relationship of men and women in, the, in um, Hindu marriages. What is the relationship of male and female <clears throat> in uh, Hindu marriages. And so I read, <clears throat> and in, in this discourse, Upazi Maharaj talks about the three, <clears throat> the three uh, types of impressions. One is the sattvic impressions. Those are kind of pure and refined in, uh, in, impressions of innocence. <clears throat> then there are the rajasic impressions, which are the impressions of, of uh, working in the world. They are heavier impressions. And the, and the worst impressions are the tamasic impressions of lust, greed, and anger, and all that. <clears throat> what upon, so th he said, this is the relationship of husband and wife <clears throat> in uh, Hindu society uh, back, and this is around the turn of the last century. So he's talking about a particular <clears throat> part of uh, uh, historical India. And so he says that the women... The wife embodies the sattvic impressions, the innocent, lighter, more refined impressions, and that's a suitable environment for the children to grow up in. <clears throat> you know, it's, she maintains that atmosphere, that nurturing atmosphere. The husband goes off and works, <clears throat> and he picks up these rajasic impressions, which are heavier. And the, the, the complementary relationship of a uh, husband and wife <clears throat> is that the the heavier impressions of the husband come into the sophic impressions that are cultivated by the wife, and they get dissolved. <clears throat> and that is the complementary relationship of husband and wife. Then Upazi Maharaj says <clears throat> that these women, he there when in his time there were seven, something like seventy-two kanyas or uh, nuns that he had in this ashram. <clears throat> And he said that these nuns perform that same function for the world. The heavy impressions come to <clears throat> this ashram and they are dissolved in this sattvic atmosphere that's created, the pure atmosphere that's created. <clears throat> so I, I read that and I thought, wow, maybe that's what Baba was doing up there on the hill. I mean, I felt uh, that at least whenever I was asked that question, I could... I could, I felt this was a plausible answer. <clears throat> and, and the impression too was that the, the, the nuns there did not know of this larger purpose that they were participating in. 
So that, that I, I gave that explanation. Then <clears throat> some years roll by <clears throat> and I heard this story. There was a woman from Colorado <clears throat> and she had this pi past life recollection in which she saw herself in the gas chambers during the Holocaust. <clears throat> they, they were in when they were being gassed <clears throat> and they were all saying the prayers and they were huddled together <clears throat> and when they died they were all lifted up and carried together to this place and one of the places that they went to looking down <clears throat> she could see all uh, this hillside with all these little buildings but there was so much uh, they felt heavenly there and from one of the buildings <clears throat> there was this chant was coming up a heavenly chant a very healing chant was coming from one of the d buildings down below <clears throat> and so she so this was a past life recollection she woke up you know from this this dream this well not a dream but from, woke up in her sleep and so she and then uh, she uh, <clears throat> And then she heard about Baba, and and a and someone convinced her to go to India. <clears throat> so she went to India and signed in at Lower Maribad. And as she came, was walking up the hill <clears throat> to the tomb. She recognizes this is the place we came, mm -hmm. right from the Holocaust, right from the mm -hmm. <clears throat> the the uh, gas chambers. This is the place we came to. She recognized it all. And as she came, and, and every two weeks back then, the women Mandali would come from Merazad, and they would pay their respects at the tomb, and there would be Arti. And this happened to be such a day. So as she came, come up, came up the hill and is going toward Baba's tomb, she hears that same chant happening. The women Mandalay are singing the seven names of God. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and it turns out that Baba, Baba in, in, during the war years had the women Mandalay at Maribad <clears throat> singing the seven names of God. I think sometimes a half an hour in the morning and 45 minutes in the evening. All during the war years. <clears throat> so wow, this was this really corroborated <clears throat> what I would I had put before Bob. Here's another proof of that. <clears throat> so anyway, so when I was asked about what Bob was doing with the women, there was this story that was quite incredible. <clears throat> then another couple of years went by, and a woman came to the center, and she said that Mara had said that all the people from the concentration camps passed through the upper room. The upper. Now, what's that? Uh, sorry, they pass through the upper what? The upper room, and okay. and this this woman assumed that it was the woman who told me assumed that it was uh, the upper room at Marizad where Baba stayed before the the second accident. But Baba didn't start staying at the uh, at the Marizad. Uh, until 1944. So I, I really think Mara was talking about the upper room at Marizad, where the women and, and Eastern and Western women lived. And, um, you know, Marabad, Marabad. Uh, Marabad, the upper room of Marabad, the, uh, above the water tank. So that was kind of what I uh, I mean, I had put to that to before Bob before years, and it unfolded that way. <clears throat> and then uh, I, I shared this with the, the Washington, D.C. group, and they asked me to write it up. So I wrote it up, and they put it in their newsletter. And then the, the next time I was going to India, I realized... Oh my God! What if the women Mandali read this? I mean, I kind of said, "Well, this is these are plausible explanations of what Bob was doing with the, the women." But now I was actually going to be seeing some of the women Mandali. I was like, "Uh oh, this was a little bit presumptuous." 
<clears throat> but when I got there, one of my friends, a woman named Terry Barton, said um, that she was walking with Marwan Jessawala. And Marwan Jessawala said, did you read that article in the, uh, the Washington, D.C. newsletter about the, Baba's work with the women Mondali? And Terry said, uh, <coughs> from D.C., she said, well, I heard him share this. And then Marwan said, she told me this before I saw the other women Mandalik. She told me, um, Baba is now letting out the secrets. So I felt that, um, you know, it wasn't as far-fetched as, you know, it wasn't just some kind of, um, um, you know, whatever, uh, crazy, crazy idea that I had. Anyway, so that's the, <clears throat> the story. But the idea was that the women were not aware of b participating in this larger, while they were doing this very circumscribed life in there, remembering Bob and writing Baba's name on paper and, you know, this very secluded life, <clears throat> without knowing it on a higher level, they were uh, taking the heaviness of the world and transmuting it. Uh, up there on the hill. So that was, you know, <clears throat> that was kind of what. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes. Thank you. That was really very 